there guys, gals, and non-binary pals. GM Potter here, and today we will be going over The Taming of the Clueless by Ian Dosher. So this one is a little bit interesting to me. It's a parody book. Um, it's a William Shakespeare-esque take on the movie Clueless from 1995, which in and of itself is a adaptation of Jane Austen's Emma. It's a old-timey retelling of a modernization of a classic tale. It has a 4.28 on Goodreads. I would give it a solid five stars. Uh, it is utterly delightful and fantastic. It is the third in a series of these books, the other two being Much Do About Mean Girls and Get Thee Back to the Future. Uh, Much Do About Mean Girls I have read. I very much enjoyed. I love Mean Girls. It's one of my favorite movies, much like Clueless is one of my favorite movies. Uh, Get Thee Back to the Future, I haven't read, but it is on my list. Um, the whole thing is very well done. It's all in iambic pentameter, and it's got that Shakespearean-esque word choice, sort of. The lines are still ripped from the movie, but then they're Shakespeareized and beaten and hammered into iambic pentameter. Um, there's also subtle nods to Jane Austen in this, such as the narrator being named Jane which is kind of a cute little nod. It also happens to be illustrated. So here's the front page, and then this is the first illustration, which is just incredibly darling. I love the illustrations in here. It does have a lot of the classic hallmarks of Shakespeare, being that it is a play in five acts. There's minimal stage direction. There is some stage direction in it, because it is, it is a play. Uh, but there's minimal stage direction. There are asides to the to the audience, which Shakespeare always did as an aside to the audience, like, hey, me thinks blah 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 blah. There's also singing. Uh, there's a character called Balthazar who sings. I will try to do it justice. To Saturday and I do roll, my homies near, my spirit full, some sixteen instruments do play, unto the shore we make our way. Roll with the homies, saucy Jack. Roll with the homies, sip the yak. My carriage is a hearty ride. The people gawk when I'm outside. No gang of ro rogues are joy reduce. My homies bear the dinner juice. Roll with the homies, etc. So it's very cute. It's very well done. It also has anaphora, which is the repetition of words or phrases at the beginning of a line for a rhetoric effect. A good example of that is with the as if speech as if he should so blatantly approach as if i would then fall into his arms as if we too familiar would become as if he could usurp my maidenhood so which is saucy but then again clueless is saucy and emma is saucy it's one of jane austen's saucier works so the whole thing is very tongue-in-cheek it's very well done taming of the shrew is a story about two sisters uh, the first sister being Bianca, the second sister being Katerina. Bianca wants to get married. She's very coquettish, she's very sweet, she's lovely, everybody in the town loves Bianca. She's the younger sister. The older sister, Katerina, is the shrew. She has been overlooked by her father for years, she's been overlooked by everybody in the town, everybody thinks she's this monster, and so she's kind of become this monster. And in order for Bianca to find happiness with the one she's fallen in love with, Katerina first has to get married. Because that's just the custom, that's what her father says. And so the one that uh, Bianca is in love with ends up teaming up with an, a rival suitor to pay Petruchio to marry Katerina. And hijinks ensue and... It's, it's the same plot as with 10 Things I Hate About You, which is actually a very good a adaptation. The other adaptation you should watch, if you're going to watch an adaptation of Taming of the Shrew, would be the one with Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton. That one is fantastic. That's the one I watched when I was a kid on VHS all the time. So that's the plot of Taming of the Shrew. It is not n even a little bit the same as the plot of Clueless, which is by Emma. It's just a funny play on words for the title. So Clueless is a modern, for the 90s when it came out, is a modern adaptation of Jane Austen's Emma in Beverly Hills, California in the, in the mid 90s. So instead of society, we have the high school. Instead of not being induced to marry, she's not being induced to date. It's, it's a very good adaptation. 
Um, I would say it's second only to the more recent Emma ad adaptation that came out just a couple years ago, which is one of the better adaptations I've ever seen. So, Clueless. Um, we have two best friends, Dion and Cher, and they're going about their high school life when the new girl, who is utterly clueless, comes in. Her name is Ty Frazier, and they decide that they're going to make her over and make her into one of their squad, essentially. And through a series of events, she usurps Cher's authority. And where Cher was the alpha and Dion was the beta, now Ty is the alpha and Dion is her beta. And Cher is kind of left by the wayside. It does have a happy ending. If you haven't seen it or you haven't read it, I will give you the chance to skip ahead now to avoid spoilers. So the happy ending is that after a fight between Ty and Cher, um, where Ty is going after the guy that Cher's decided she likes, which is Josh, her no longer stepbrother. They make up and Ty goes after someone who's more appropriate to her initial social standing, who she liked from the beginning but was dissuaded from by Cher. Uh, and Cher goes after Josh. And during the story, Cher and Dion, at the beginning of the story, were trying to get two teachers to fall in love to improve their grades. And it ends with a wedding between the two teachers. And Cher and Josh are happily together. Dion is happily with Murray. Um, they have a very tumultuous relationship and Ty is very happily with Travis. Couldn't remember his name there for a minute because I wanted to call him Brecken because in the movie he's played by the wonderful Breckenmeyer who uh, I almost named one of my cats after. Instead I named my cat after Seth Green. Little aside, little bit of trivia there. So the big question is, will I be reading this again? And the answer is happily yes. It's one of those books that you come back to time and time again and it it's one of the it's the sort that you can kind of skim over as you're reading that you don't have to pour over every line but if you do so choose to there's a lot that you can get from it there's a lot of little references here and there to to the other books in the series to uh i caught little references to much ado about mean girls and there's references to jane austen and her other works there's references to the movie and behind the scenes information and it's just it's very well done it's well worth reading i highly recommend it just to let y'all know i do have an event coming up on april 3rd from 1 to 3 here in dallas texas at the half price books flagship location on northwest highway I will be selling and signing copies of both my novel 8 and my short story collection in a flash. So if you're interested or just in the neighborhood, feel free to come on by and say hi. Love to see you there. Have you read The Taming of the Clueless? What did you think? Let me know down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.